Welcome to Aesthetics by Swanson, where everything is aesthetic. This is episode 13, How to Get Ready for Summer. Woo-wee! This is going to be a good one. As usual, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Give us a rating on the Spotify podcast if you like it. If you don't, that's fine too. But regardless, we still love you guys. We're still going to deliver the information per usual. A uh, huge shout out to Jessica Bickley who got the Gymshark sponsorship. Gymshark, we love you. Gymshark for women, we love you. We all love you. Gymshark, we love you. Huge shout out to Jessica Bickling. May all your dreams come true, Jessica. Keep putting in that work. We see you putting in the work and we hope that the uh, the cut is amazing. The cut is amazing. And speaking of cut, let's jump right into this. Let's get ready for summer. So if you're trying to get ready for summer, get ripped, reveal those gains, You don't start in the springtime, or let me go back a little bit. You don't start in the summertime. You don't start in June if you're trying to get ripped, if you're trying to reveal those gains that you built in the wintertime. You start now, like February now, March now. This is the time that you start. The reason why is because just like, you know, And referencing to getting ready to step on stage for a bodybuilding prep, you always want to give yourself enough wiggle room, okay? So this goes for pretty much any cut, getting ready for a wedding, getting ready to fit into a dress, getting ready to look good, you know, on the beach. You always want to give yourself enough wiggle room so you can maintain those gains that you made in the cut. You know, or you just, you know, maintain the gains that you have when you're in the bulk if you make exponential gains, which is basically whenever you're still building a little bit of more muscle, you're recomping even more when you're in a calorie deficit, which I'm going to get to. So it is very much possible to make exponential gains in a cut, and I'm going to talk about that. So you get ready for the summer cut now. You don't start in the summer. So how do you do this? Well, here at a sex boss once we're going to give you the cheat codes to reach your goal, reach that summer body. So assuming if you're listening to this right now, if you just want to get ready for summer and be leaner, this podcast is for you all across the board. If you're just trying to get whew, fresh and ready abs popping, if you've built that solid muscle base, this podcast is for you. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Let's dive into it. So number one, so you built the solid muscle base and you want to get right. Well, number one, just like I talked about on the previous podcast, it's always going to start with the what? The goal. Something I always have to drive home on every podcast because you got to know where you're going. You got to know where you where you are and where you're going. So with that being said, if you've done bulk and cut cycles before, essentially this is a cutting cycle or a maintenance cycle. If you've done any type of, you know, cycle where you're bulking or cutting maintenance, maintenance for a short amount of time to maintain the gains, and then you go into a cut or maintenance for a time, and then you go into a bulk, you know, it always has to start off with the goal. If, it, if the goal is a surplus, you know, increase cows, maybe dial back the cardio, or if you want to get ripped and reveal the gains in this case, you go into a calorie deficit and then you keep the training the same. So as it pertains to the nutrition, we're looking to lose body fat and still keep our hard-earned muscle that we built in the the previous phase. So what you want to do is, let's say Shelly wants to lose 10 pounds. So Shelly weighs arbitrarily, okay, this isn't reality, but just arbitrarily, Shelly weighs 140. She weighs 140. We're not going to get into the whole height and weight and age. We're, ju- we're just going to say that Shelly weighs 140. Okay, let's write this down. Okay, Shelly weighs 140. And she knows because she's done the cycles before, okay, that whenever she's like beach ready, summer ready, Shelly's weight at the end of that cycle is going to be 132. So we know Shelly needs to lose about eight pounds. So we want to say, okay, Shelly's going to go, Shelly's going to lose a pound for eight weeks, okay? For a total of eight pounds, which is going to get her right for summer and even leave some wiggle room, which I'm going to talk about later. So we know that a pound 
of fat is roughly about 3,500 calories. Okay? So, times seven, which is seven days out of the week, that's going to put us at a negative 500 calorie deficit a day. We're not going to get into our maintenance calories, but we just need to know, you know, uh, per dropping calories, they, it's going to be a negative 500 each day. Now, you can zigzag the calories. That's fine, too. But to keep everything consistent, which is what we want, we're going to just drop Shelly's calories from her maintenance, negative 500 cals from her maintenance. We're going to run that cycle until we get to the end. Now, if Shelly starts to get, you know, as she's getting to the leaner physique, if she wants to implement refeeds, that's perfectly fine, too. In fact, that may actually uh, speed up the process because training intensity is going to go up whenever she gets those extra carbs in. And, you know, like I said, you can also zigzag the calories if you do a refeed. It all depends on what you want to do. So number one, anytime when we go into a different goal or jump into uh, a different physique, get our body composition into a different direction, we always want to start with the nutrition first, not the training. The training is always going to be a constant in every single phase. So actually, let me go back on that. When we're, when we're in like a, um, an off season, the training intensity is going to be kicked up a lot more because you're in a growth phase. When you're in a deficit in the maintenance phase, the training intensity is still very high, but the extra calories are not coming in as they were in a surplus. So we want to keep the intensity as high as possible while we're in that negative 500 uh, calorie deficit, you know, daily. So, and it is 100% possible to still make those incremental gains in a deficit and body recomp uh, even better. So negative 500 deficit, one gram per pound for protein, carbs and fats, they don't matter, but obviously keep them balanced. So that's the nutritional part of it. The training part, we want to keep the intensity high. We want to know our intensity threshold. We want to track our lifts. Shelly's going to be ready for that beach, right? She's going to be ready for, ready for that carnival cruise. She's going to be ready for all of the above. So once Shelly has reached her goal, Shelly's not going to stay in that negative 500 calorie deficit. She's going to go back to her maintenance level of calories. Or she can even go on a little bit of a surplus just to, you know, get the metabolism fired up again and then level off to maintenance. You know, maybe she cut a little bit too much or we have a little bit more wiggle room. So realistically speaking, if Shelly starts in February and we say, okay, eight pounds for two months, that's eight weeks. So a pound each week, that's two months of so February, March, April, that's going to pretty much put her with the wiggle room of May and June. She's going to be ready for that beach. That ass is going to be popping from Miami. Yes. Yes, bitch. Yes. She's going to be ready for that beach. Okay. She's going to be ready to go out with the hubby. Have those lovely strawberry daiquiris. And get shit popping. Okay. That's it. Nutrition. We deduct negative 500. We have a goal. We have a weight goal. She's done this before. That's it. And I want to encourage you guys to go through these bulks and cuts and understand where your thresholds are. It's going to take about a good, I want to say, it's going to take about a good two to three bulks and cuts to really understand what pictures and proper documentation to really know where your rip physique is, to know where your, your bulking threshold is. For me, my bulking threshold is around 193 to 200 pounds, 200 pounds being the ultimate max. My ripped physique, all abs dialed in, striations in the chest and delts is about 186. 183, I'm pretty much borderline shredded. As I go down below 183, I'm getting ready to like step on stage and do a bodybuilding show. Okay? So... It's very important that we have the nutrition dialed in and the training intensity at an all-time high. So I also encourage you guys that when you go through these cycles, this is why I always stress 
that, hey, you need to like track your calories because once you do those first, you know, first two or three bulk and cut cycles and you've documented the calories with no guesswork and you've documented the training and your intensity thresholds, now you have some data to work off of. So for me, I already know my maintenance. My maintenance calories is 2680 easily. If my cardio goes up, my maintenance at that point is going to be a little bit higher because my energy expenditure calories out is a little bit higher. So, uh, and it's only up by just a little bit. So, uh, with that being said, guys, this has been episode 13, how to get ready for summer. Don't wait until the summer to get ready for summer. Start now. Let's get it popping. Let's run it up. If you like this podcast, don't forget to give us a rating. We love you guys. Have a great day. And remember, you have the power.